So we are in front of the PXS 3000. It's the big brother to the S1000. We've already done a review of the S1000 and we've been waiting for the 3000. We have all around the world been in various states of COVID lockdown. Uh, and one of the really interesting, uh, something that's actually given me a lot of hope and inspiration for the world is that piano sales uh, are through the roof at this time, which means that uh, this opportunity, these isolation opportunities given a lot of people uh, the chance to either discover or rediscover music and piano specifically. So that gives me uh, much joy uh, because I think that's just more people out there that are gonna be uh, listening to more piano music, trying to learn the piano, obviously uh, buying pianos, that's sort of a practical good thing that comes out of this for us in the piano industry. Uh, but the long story short is that we were waiting a very long time for these because they were out of stock. All of these instruments in the thousand dollar range Canadian dollars, we're talking of course, six, seven hundred dollars US. Everything uh, just sold like crazy. People were looking for ways to get a good piano into their home fairly affordably. And so uh, all of the all the big ones, Kawhi ES-110, Kawhi KDP-110, Roland, uh, you know, FP-10, FP-30, Yamaha P-125, Yamaha, they were all gone. No one had anything. So we finally got a box version of the S-3000 and it's the first time we're gonna have a chance to take a peek at it. I personally have never been in front of an S3000 before, and as I've said before in some of these unboxing videos, I love doing them when I genuinely haven't had a chance myself to really get a, a, a long, stale uh, impression of the instrument. These are just my first thoughts for those who are in the market for an instrument and also looking for a fresh look and fresh perspective on what you can get for this kind of price. So, once again, trusty orange scissors. We're ready to cut this baby open. Uh, here we go. All right, let's just get this box out of here. So we've got the main piano out. Looks like this is a music stand. Feels like it is a steel music stand, which I like, uh, or, or combination of steel and plastic. Um, we've got the instruction manual. The power is in one of the styrofoam ends. So we can get this box out of here and finish getting the 3000 all put away. Oh yeah, the famous sustain pedal. Not my favorite, but it'll work. All right, so we'll get those unwrapped. But here is the main event. Now, judging by photos and everything else I've read about this, the 3000 is gonna have that beautiful high gloss finish on the outside, just like the 1000 did. And yes, indeed, looks like that's exactly what we've got. Casio is obviously taking a page from Apple, who figured out long ago the not so secret truth that human beings like bright, shiny, pretty looking things. So here we go with the 3000. That is just a beautiful mirror-like finish on there. Looks a lot the same as the 1000, so I'm eager to find out whether the differences here uh, are worth the price, because this is a couple hundred dollars more. Uh, but certainly we're gonna get this set up. We will be back in just a couple of minutes with it on the stand and get it plugged in and listen to this thing uh, and you know see what's underneath the hood. So thanks so much for being with us so far. We'll be back in just a second. So we've got the S3000 set up in front of me. I've had just a couple of minutes and I will confess I did take a look at the manual. Uh, that's okay, I'll get over it. Um, but my first impression is that for the couple hundred dollars that uh, that's, uh, kind of separates the 3000 from the 1000, if you are, uh, first of all, if it's affordable, uh, if it is not a budget issue and you're just trying to understand the difference in value between the S1000 and the S3000, um, if you are somebody who enjoys any type of uh, contemporary playing on your own and you're not using this uh, for classical or you're um, uh, not somebody who exclusively uh, reads off sheet music, you're going to want to do the 3000. It's worth the money, every single penny. Uh, just in the few minutes that I'm here, uh, this is what I'm noticing. 
the uh, this is more of a practical thing the display is set up in a way that I probably could have gotten away with not looking at the instruction manual it's uh, far more intuitive uh, than the 1000 uh, versus the 3000 there's not as many uh, shortcut commands that you need to use uh, in order to access some of these interesting functions uh, it's set up really nicely with two assignable knobs uh, when I first saw those I thought those would kind of be uh, kind of useless they're actually quite useful because it's so easy to assign those knobs to a certain filter or a certain effect you wind up using it and that's the case with any kind of advanced function the easier it is to access and use the more likely you are to to actually make use of it uh, the display is big enough that you're seeing what you need to see uh, you know what function mode you're in uh, you know the song that you have selected uh, and so if, it's, if your choice is really down to the 1000 or the 3000 uh, and you think you're going to make use of any one of these things, the rhythms, the, uh, you know, the accompaniments, um, and definitely if you're more of a contemporary player and you, and you do a little bit of your own courting or a little bit of basic improv, it's a no-brainer. This is definitely the one that you're going to want to go with. Uh, this is right in the same price range as, let's see, an FP30. It's a little bit more than a Yamaha P125. And so in my mind, the 125 is probably the best comparator uh, to this versus uh, the S3000. Uh, and, and so we'll be diving in uh, maybe more in the review section as to you know, how the value of those two uh, works out. But... I'm going to give you just a few quick tastes of what this sounds like. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, I had arpeggiator turned on because, I don't know. It just puts you in a space right away. Uh, and it's fairly easy to turn that off. So let's just uh, function, function arpeggiator off. There we go. So now we're just back to plain old piano. So this is the default grand piano sound. Uh, as soon as I turned it on, this is what we got. And I just turned on a different sound mode. I think this was uh, some kind of an additional digital signal processing. That sounds great. Like, honestly. Okay, so that, that's just a taste of some of the grand piano sound. Uh, what do we have here? Grand piano bright.
Grand Piano Mellow. Wow, that's really mellow. That actually sounded like an EP there for a second. Oh, that is beautiful. That's so interesting. Before I turned on their the second red dot sound mode, that was actually my favorite sample to, uh, so far. Also very cool. Rock piano. Sorry that this is what I immediately play when I see rock piano. Uh, no! Jazz piano, why all of a sudden with a chorus on it? Okay, that's a... Mm, no. That's nice. So, a wide variety of pianos in there for sure. And we'll take a deeper look at this when we do the entire review. We, you know, this is kind of just a quick snapshot, but um, I like the variety. There's some hits and there's some misses in there, but there's definitely more hits than misses. Um, ah. Kind of a monto an octave piano. Strings piano. Okay, so we've got that. We've got E piano. That's nice. And you've also got the ability, it looks like, to do some layering, some splitting. The transpose is also, uh, I think, pretty easy to get at. And the rhythms seem like they're pretty easy to get at as well. So if we go rhythm here, is this going to do what I think it's going to do? It is going to do what I thought it was going to do. It's almost like that Bruno Mars 24, that's 24-7. There's some nice rhythms in there, so we're going to take a, a better look at that. But I hear, my first impressions of this instrument are, are quite positive. I'm really enjoying uh, this, in, this, this piano. And it's easily laid out. It's easy uh, to uh, to sort of operate through, and the display makes it. Uh, it's very inviting to want to explore all the different nooks and crannies of the piano. I think they've done a fantastic job of the display. So for all the complaints I had about the 1000 being a little bit inaccessible to get into kind of the second layer of functionality, uh, this has uh, completely solved the issue, and I really like the overall look of the piano. So uh, first impressions are, are thumbs up and we're going to be taking a deeper look at this uh, in our full review. A couple other quick points that we noticed as we were taking it out, just like the 1000, we've got our dual quarter inch outputs which is great, you've got an audio input which is great, and although Casio does not advertise uh, what the wattage is, it seems like we've got a little bit more power coming out of the 3000 than the 1000. Uh, but I think it's exactly the same uh, action. 
And so we'll be focusing on the action because I think the action is going to be, of, of everything in this instrument, I think the action is going to be the make or break point uh, for most series players. Um, probably not going to be as much of an issue for somebody who's just starting out. Uh, anyway, this is going to be an exciting review to do. I'm really pumped about this. So happy that we got this in finally from Casio. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us for this quick unboxing video. We hope that you'll stick around and watch the, the following full review uh, of the video. And if it's the first time that you've been to the channel, uh, just checking us out for the first time, we would so appreciate if you subscribed, you hit that notification. It helps support the channel uh, and helps us to uh, you know stay nice and excited about making the videos. You'll be informed every time we hit a new piece of content. That's usually happening three, two, three, four times a week. We're trying to get videos out. So thanks again for dropping by to the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison. We will see you hopefully back for the full review and if not for more videos shortly. Sunny.